Hi guys, let's discuss today's set of questions. And today's first question relates to an award, the Nobel Prize of the Architecture World. So in the world of architecture, the highest prize is the Pritzker Prize. And um, it's, this is also referred to as the Nobel Prize of the Architecture Field. So who is the winner? Who won this uh, this year's Pritzker Prize? Uh, this is David uh, Chipperfield. He had won it this. Okay. Now I want you to understand something here. Uh, as to who, after who is this prize named? You could write this. 2023 Pritzker, sorry. Pritzker Prize named after. Pritzker Prize named after. J. Pritzker. The, the word Pritzker is spelled here. J. J. A. Y. J. Pritzker. Dash started in 1979. Started in 1979. Now, um, you know, we mentioned that this is the highest award in the world of um, architecture. In fact, it's considered the Nobel Prize of architecture. Is there has there been any Indian who's won this award? Yes, Bal Krishna Vittal Das Doshi. B.V. Doshi is the only Indian to have won this award. You could write this. Bal Krishna Vittal Das or B.V. Doshi. D-O-S-H-I. Doshi. Dash. Only Indian. Only Indian to receive the Pritzker Prize. So something pretty interesting is that an Indian has won this. Uh, Bal Krishna Vittal Das Doshi died in January this year. He designed lots of buildings like you know iconic structures like the Indian Institute of Management in Bhopal, uh, in uh, Bangalore. He's the guy who designed it. Okay. Over the following, he became the first Indian woman, Indian IAF officer to get a command combat appointment. This is the first. Okay. We have had um, you know we have had uh, women. Um, you know, Carter in basically in, in the defense forces, but this is the first ever time that a woman IAF, IAF Indian Air Force officer has been has been given a command combat appointment. And that's Captain uh, Group Captain Shalija Dhami. You know, it would also help you to know that she was commissioned way back in 2003. I think she was commissioned way back in 2003. She has about 2800 hours of flying experience she's a certified um, helicopter helicopter uh, pilot helo pilot h-e-l-o helo pilot is helicopter pilot so she was commissioned in 2003 as a helicopter pilot and since then she has flown about 2800 hours of you know uh, uh, what she has this ex flying experience and i think she has been appointed uh, to the western sector india's western sector Okay, um, what is the motto uh, of the Indian Air Force? The Indian Air Force's motto is touch the sky with glory. Touch the sky with glory, G-L-O-R-Y. That's the motto of the Indian Air Force. Okay, touch the sky with glory. This comes from the Bhagavad Gita. This comes from the Bhagavad Gita. And you know what is the Indian Air Force Day? 8th October. 8th October is the Indian Air Force Day. That's a day that's celebrated as the Indian Air Force Day. Like 15th January is the Indian Army Day. Okay. I think December 4th is the Navy Day. Which country pledged financial and technological support to help ASEAN countries accelerate their efforts to decarbonize their economies and combat global climate change? So reducing carbon footprint is the goal here. Which country has done this? It's already mentioned. India has... India is a leader in um, environmental work, global environmental work. But this particular country is Japan. As far as the answer is concerned, India, oh, sorry, Japan is in the forefront of helping nations decarbonize their economies. Now, I want you to write a bit about ASEAN countries. ASEAN is uh, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Dash. 
started 1967 established 1967 dash dash uh, head office in jakarta jakarta j a k a r t a jakarta as you know is a capital of indonesia jakarta dash secretary general is secretary general is kao k a o i repeat k a o kao kim k i m kim kao kim hon h o u r n h o u r n so kao kim hon h o u r n in brackets cambodia he comes from cambodia c a m b o d i a cambodia cambodia last point you could write dash 10 members 10 members it's easy to remember this go slight west of india okay sorry east of india you have myanmar one myanmar two thailand three cambodia four laos five vietnam cross the pacific jump into the pacific six philippines seven indonesia eight Brunei, 9, Malaysia, 10, Singapore, you got 10, you know, you just have to take a turn and for that, well, you need to be familiar with the locations of countries, which country is located in what place kind of thing, hmm? these things appear tough, but they're not, I would suggest you could do one thing, you could take a photo, okay, you take a photo, put it as a screensaver, let's say you write a short note on ASEAN members, okay, um, you take a photo of that short note and put it as a screensaver. Every time you pick up your phone, you pick your phone, you will have this glow, glowing, glowing up, the screen will glow up and you could repeat, you could refresh your memory, you know, of who the member states of ASEAN are. Hmm? You can always learn that way. Who of the following persons authored the book titled India's Vaccine Growth Story from Cowpox to Vaccine Maitri? Uh, Sachin Singh Yadav, there's not much to discuss here, so I think we will just uh, move from here. You see the last name, Subramaniam Jayashankar, that's the name of the, the that's the name of India's foreign minister, who is also the author of the book called The India Way, The India Way, W-A-Y, The India Way. Under the UN High Seas Treaty, dash percent of the world's international waters will be under the marine protected areas by 2030. 30 percent. I want you to write a bit about this. You could write United Nations High Seas Treaty. That's the name of the treaty. UN High Seas Treaty. Underline that first point. Also known as, also known as Paris Agreement. Paris Agreement. For the oceans, for the oceans, Paris Agreement for the oceans. Next, goal is to G O A L. Goal is to protect thirty percent of thirty percent of world's oceans, world's oceans, but. 2030 by 2030 by 2030 next point this goal is also called this goal is also called 30 times 30 30 times 30 so 30 percent of the world's oceans need to be brought into production by year 2030 next um, the waters beyond the waters in plural waters means water body the waters beyond exclusive economic zone exclusive economic zone EEZ are called high seas are called high seas full stop next point under EEZ, exclusive, exclusive economic zone, under exclusive economic zone, comma, up to 12, up 
to 200 nautical miles up to 200 nautical miles which is what in brackets 370 kilometers it's 1.85 one nautical mile equals 1.85 kilometers so in brackets you could write about 370 kilometers under EEZ um, up to 200 kilometers from the coast 200 nautical miles kilo, nautical miles from the coast is considered a country's exclusive a country's exclusive economic zone dash in this region in this region in this region a country can a country can search the oceans and has exclusive rights and has exclusive rights has exclusive rights in the EEZ area in the EEZ area exclusive rights over what drilling oil hydrocarbons everything fishes any mineral resources like rare earths found under water anything and everything from the coast to up to 200 nautical miles 370 kilometers let's say is India's background India can look for diamonds India could look for anything under oceans that would be the exclusive economic zone of India no foreign country can come into this region but beyond this region there is the high seas okay and high seas are pretty vulnerable today because a lot of illegal fishing activities happening in this high seas Japan's whale fishes whale you know whaling it's called whaling Japan's whaling activity is going towards Antarctica so they go to Antarctica the Japanese fishermen they go to Japan uh, they go to Antarctica and then they search kill those animals bring them back home so I mean this is the danger today the purpose of this treaty is to regulate uncontrolled you know or say um, fishing and um, uh, what is it called drilling uncontrolled fishing and drilling so see the environment is being damaged year by year it's going down actually the, the state of the world's oceans is going down <coughs> there's a lot of plastics there's a lot of plastic but then not much can be done about this actually not much can be done in fact it's already late is what many scientists say but of course we can always do something to ensure that we don't have a worse tomorrow yeah so the Swa Swami fund completed over 20,557 homes since inception you know about four years back which of these statements are true all of them are true so since it's all of them are true I'll not go there but I can tell you State Bank uh, of India's chairperson is um, you know you could write this Dinesh Khara Dinesh Khara K H A R A. the Indian Institute of Science sorry I am so sorry I, ISRO Indian Space Research Organization the Indian Space Research Organization will be undertaking an experiment of a controlled re-entry of the decommissioned megatropic satellite means it's been decommissioned it's useless it's defunct it's not being used by ISRO now so it's we are looking at bringing it back to earth in a controlled way because as something enters into the earth's atmosphere it burns up it usually burns up because of the extreme heat at the you know in the, the, the place where what we call outer space so MT1 is a joint um, well, satellite launched sometime you know about 12 years back um, for to study tropical climate and uh, tropical weather um, whose joint venture is this Indo French India and France came together to launch this satellite and we have done a remarkable job actually now when it comes to uh, 
the French space agency, we call it ISRO, they call it CN, CNES, National Space Studies Agency, National Sp Space Studies Agency, CNES, okay, next, who is the ISRO chairman, S. Somanath, S. Somanath, S-O-M-A-N-A-T-A, Somanath, Hmm. Which of the following institutions released a report titled More Than a Billion Reasons The Urgent Need to Build Universal Protection for Our Children for our Children? The International Labor Organization and UNICEF have come about with this particular report that um, focuses on you know the ill effects of uh, you know lack of care for children and all that. So I'll tell you about each of these organizations, head office and the the place where it's headquartered and of course uh, the chief of these organizations. ILO is International Labour Organization, International Labour Organization dash Geneva, G-E-N-E-V-A, Geneva, that's head office area, G-E-N-E-V-A. Geneva as you know is in Switzerland, okay, Geneva, Switzerland dash, who is the Secretary General, Gilbert Humbo. G I L B E R T Gilbert Humbo H O U N G B O I'll spell H O U N G B O Humbo Gilbert Humbo is from Togo in brackets Togo T O G O which is an African a tiny African country Next UNICEF United Nations Children's Fund United Nations Children's Fund dash New York City New York City then we have uh, the chief uh, Kathy Russell or Catherine Russell Catherine Russell R U S S E L Russell Catherine Russell Catherine Russell she is from the US United States Third one, World Economic Forum, WEF World Economic Forum. World Economic Forum um, is headquartered in uh, Colony, C O L O G N Y. I repeat, C O L O G N Y, Colony, comma, Switzerland, Switzerland. And its founder chairperson is. Klaus Schwab, Klaus, K-L-A-U-S, K-L-A-U-S, Klaus, Schwab, S-C-H-W-A-B, Schwab, he is from Switzerland, next, W-H-O, World Health Organization, W-H-O, World Health Organization, headquartered in Geneva, Geneva, Switzerland. Next, Director General, Director General, Dr. Tedros, D T E D R O S, Tedros, Dr. Tedros, T E D R O S, Dr. Tedros, Adhanom, A D H A N O M, A D H A N O M, Tedros Adhanom. Next, is there anything else? Mm, International Monetary Fund, IMF. International Monetary Fund. Dash. Washington, D.C., U.S. Washington, D.C., U.S. Dash. Kristalina Georgieva. Kristalina Georgieva. K-R-I-S-T-L-A-N-O. Kristalina T A L A N O Kristalina Georgieva G E O R G I E V A Georgieva She is from the country of Bulgaria B U L G A R I A Bulgaria Bulgaria Next UNHCR United Nations Commissioner for High Ref Sorry High Commissioner for Refugees United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees 
the um, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Uh, it's headquartered in uh, Geneva, and its C, its its head is Filippo Grandi. Filippo, F I L I P P O. Filippo Grandi, G R A N D I. Grandi. UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. It's headquartered in Paris. Headquartered in Paris. Dash. It's uh, headed by Audrey Azule. Audrey. A-U-D-R-E-Y. Audrey Azule. A-Z-O-U-L-A-Y. A-Z-O-U-L-A-Y. Azule. So we covered everything pretty much. Which pub public sector enterprise was recently conferred with the Central Board of Irrigation and Power Award for outstanding contribution in the power generation sector? It is National Thermal Power Corporation, NTPC. National Thermal Power Corporation is India's largest power generator, my friends. Its chairperson is Gurdip Singh. Gurdip Singh. Next. Who is the CEO of Tata Power? Praveer Sinha, Praveer, P R A V V, sorry, P R A V E E R, Praveer Sinha, S I N H A, Praveer Sinha. Next, Power Grid Corporation, K Srikant, K Srikant, Chairperson MD, then National Hydroelectric Power Corporation. Rajiv Kumar Bishnoi. Rajiv Kumar Bishnoi. Rajiv Kumar Bishnoi. Okay. The G20 Foreign Ministers meeting took place in a physical format in the city of New Delhi. Okay. So, the Japanese Foreign Minister did not come. And Japan's China sent a junior level official. I mean, it's always there. No? Um, want to know about Delhi hardly anything to discuss about Delhi isn't it so G20 well there are 19 member countries plus European Union 19 member countries plus European Union if you look at only Asia what are the countries I'm not going to discuss all you look at Indonesia South Korea Japan three number four India number five Turkey number six Saudi Arabia so six countries in you know Asia Okay, to repeat Malaysia, sorry, to repeat Indonesia, which is you have, um, you know, um, India, you have um, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, okay, um, then you have China, I meant forgot to mention China, then South Korea and Japan, okay. Um, what else could you write? See, the P5, permanent five members of the UN Security Council, were also here. They were there. The Russian foreign minister was there. There was, his comments generated a lot of controversy. Yeah. So, this is 2023. India is hosting the 2020, you know, summit this year. What about 2024? You could write this. 2024 G20 summit dash Brazil, 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 2025, Republic of South Africa, South Africa, South Africa, which Indian warship is taking part in one of the world's largest multinational maritime exercises named uh, exercise named uh, the International Maritime Exercise Cutlass Express 20. 23. It is INS Trikand. This is this ship you see here. This is a frigate. It's a missile destroyer. So, um, it's, um, you could write this. International Maritime Exercise dash hosted by Bahrain, B-H-A-R-A-I-N, B-H-A-R-A-I-N dash India represented by, India represented by INS, Indian Naval Ship Trikand, Trikand. Is it? Trikand. Trikand. Dash. Um, 
what is that um, INS Trikand India's okay you could write one more thing Talwar class Talwar class Talwar class Talwar class frigate F-R-I-G-A-T frigate Talwar class frigate okay yeah What is the name of the maiden joint military exercise between the Indian Navy, sorry, in the Indian Army and the French Army to be conducted at Mangode Military Station, Tiruvannathapuram, Kerala? You know, Tiruvannathapuram is the capital of Kerala. Uh, Fringex, Fringex C. France, India joint exercise is Fringex. What about Sampriti with Bangladesh? With Bangladesh. Vajra Prahar, United States. Nomadic elephant, Mongolia, Mongolia, Garva Shakti, Indonesia, okay, Indonesia. On the International Women's Day, on 8th March, uh, the theme, you know, the theme for the, for this year's IMW was inaugurated and this is the fourth one, Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. Technology is a great leveler, great leveler. Almost everyone is the same when they have some knowledge of what we already have, okay? So there's pretty little to discuss about. This is International Women's Day, March 8th. When is International Men's Day? November 19th, November 19th, 1-9, okay? With which company did India sign or ONGC? When I say India, I'm talking of a company that representing the country. Which company signed, uh, did uh, ONGC sign an agreement or memorandum of understanding for exploration of deep water blocks, deep inside, okay? That would be total energies, total energies. This is Europe's, you know, this is one of the world's biggest companies, my friends, one of the world's biggest companies. Uh, its turnover is about, last year its turnover was $185 billion, $185 billion, okay? Um, you look at choice three, Aramco. This Aramco is a Saudi Arabian company, their national oil company. You know, this year they made a record profit of $161 billion. They made billions of dollars in profit, 161, which, you know, which is kind of breaking their own record. Yeah. Okay. So would you like to write the names of the CEOs of uh, all these companies? Uh, ONGC, you could write Arun Kumar Singh, Arun Kumar Singh, Arun Kumar Singh, then Konoko Phillips, Konoko Phillips, it's a 45 46 billion dollar company, right? Ryan Lance, Ryan, R Y A N, Ryan, I repeat, R Y A N, Ryan. What? Lance, L-A-N-C-E, Lance. Ryan Lance. Next, Total Energies. Oh, it's a mega company. Its turnover over last year was over $350 billion, around 360, I guess. That's a lot of money, guys. Uh, uh, no, no, Total Energies is 184. Total Energies is 184. ConocoPhillips is a small company, relatively small company. It's about $47 billion. But when you look at total energy is $184 something. ConocoPhillips is turnover being 46. It comes to close to, you know, uh, one third uh, of um, a little over one third. In fact, one fourth, you could say, of total energy's turnover. Total energy's uh, CEO is Patrick, Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Patrick. Poyani, P O Y, sorry, P O U, P O U, Y Y A N E. Okay, A N E. Next, Aramco, Aramco, this is a 360 billion dollar company, of which last year they made 161 billion dollars in profit. Yeah. So, Aramco. The world's largest oil company, my friends. Uh, its CEO is Ryan Lance. 
did I make a mistake a while ago? No, I think uh, I'm making a mistake now. Uh, total energy is we said um, Patrick Powen. Aramco is yeah Aramco I was talking about turnover was about 360 billion dollars while they made it then uh, the profit of 161 billion dollars and uh, because I actually did not follow the order yeah I should have started with number two instead of number one but anyway Aramco's uh, CEO is Amin Nasir Amin A M I N Amin Nasir N A S S E R Nasir Amin Nasir next British Petroleum British Petroleum the CEO is Bernard B E R I repeat B E R N A R D Bernard Looney L O O N E Y Looney Bernard Looney Next Shell Corporation you could write CEO Shell Well W A E L I repeat W A E L Well Well Savan S A W A N S A W A L Well Savan Okay to repeat uh, Conoco Phillips is Ryan Lance Total Energies is Patrick Powen uh, Amin Nisar is CEO of Aramco Bernard Looney British Petroleum Shell Well Nassam oh, sorry Well Savan Well Savan Usually I would remember but sometimes what happens is that um, too much of information like you see if I would look at the head offices total energy head office Paris you know that's how I look at but they are not important okay the center right reform party Prime Minister Kaja Kallas overwhelmingly won the Baltic countries general elections she is the Prime Minister of Estonia this is Estonia ladies and gentlemen this is Estonia and this is Kaja Kallis okay and uh, if you look at the capitals of these places, they are already mentioned on the screen for you. Um, Lithuania. You see the capital there? Lithuania. Vilnius. V-I-L-N-I-U-S. But it's already there. So I'll give you something extra. Please write. Lithuania. The president is Gitanas. G-I-T-A-N-A-S. I repeat. G-I-T-A-N-A-S. Gitanas. Now Sida N A U S C D A N A U S C D A Gitanas Now Sida hmm. What about Latvia? This is Latvia. See these three countries Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania together called Baltic nations, Baltic countries. So Latvia is uh, run by you could write Chris Janis Karins K R I S J A N I S Chris Janis Karins K A R I N S Karins Okay next Lithuania this is Lithuania Lithuania right I think Lithuania I just mentioned Gitanas Nosida we mentioned Latvia also, Chris Janis Karins. Estonia is already mentioned here. Why don't we write the name of um, um, Poland? Yeah, Poland's Prime Minister, right? Poland Prime Minister, Poland Prime Minister, Matthews Morawiecki. I'll spell M A T M A T E U E U S Z. M A T E U S Z Matthews Moraviki M O R A W I E C K I Moraviki. Okay. Next, I guess that should be fine. Cyprus, we discussed a few days back. Nikos um, Christo Dolidis is the president. You don't have to write this. Yeah. Nearly six and a half lakh olive ridley sea turtles arrived from mass nesting on the Rishikolya beach uh, this year. This beach is in uh, Orisha. These only ridley sea turtles are endangered. Okay, and they come here, probably the only place in India. Uh, these, uh, you know, this, uh, what do you say, 
turtles come to the coast, lay eggs, go back. That is what they do. They spawn, they spawn, you know, creation basically, the babies. So this is the Rishikalya beach in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Sorry, in, in Odisha. I'm so sorry, Odisha. When, because when I said Rishikalya, uh, it should be and it should be Odisha and not Andhra Pradesh because Rushikonda beach is in Andhra Pradesh. That's where I think I faltered. Rushikulya in Odisha, Rushikonda is in Andhra Pradesh. Hmm? Rushikonda beach is um, Vishakapatnam basically. Fair? Who is the chief minister of Odisha? The chief minister of Odisha is Navin Patnaik. Navin Patnaik. Andhra Pradesh. Uh, Chief Minister is Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Y.S. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Yeah. Then West Bengal, Mamta Banerjee. Gujarat, Bhupendra Patel. Bhupendra Patel. Bhupendra Patel. Then Karnataka, um, Basavaraj Bommai. Basavaraj Bommai. Basavaraj Bommai, B O M M E I, Basavaraj Bommai. Yeah. The RBA recently launched Mission Her Payment Digital on the occasion of the Digital Payments Awareness Week. Identify the correct statements regarding this initiative. All of these are correct. Um, you know, um, it was observed in the second, more or less second week, 6th to 12th March. Okay, and um, you know this uh, theme also digital payment up now. Aurum ko bhi sikhao. How big is digital payments in India? To give you an idea, UPI is something that we should look at. Unified payments interface. Interface. Unified payments interface. In February 2023, the previous month, in February this year, about 753 crore digital transactions happen 753 crore upi transactions happen you have a chai somewhere you pay by a qr code by a wallet qr code is quick reaction code you use a wallet your bank account is linked to the wallet okay the person to whom you are paying is also has their bank account linked to their wallet so the moment you transfer money you are simply sending from your account to their account okay you know, there are 390 banks in India that are live, that are there on the UPI network, 390, today, 390 banks live on UPI network. Second point, 753 crore transactions happened in, in February 2023. This involved a transaction of one, sorry, uh, this involved a transaction of 12.35 lakh crore rupees. 12 lakhs 35,000 crore rupees went from this side to the other side. Okay. So this is the money that's there in the system today. And this amount of money of 12.35 lakh crore rupees was transacted through 783, sorry, 753 transactions. India has come a long way in digital payments. Yeah. Which country signed an agreement with Turkey to deposit $5 billion in the country's central bank through the Saudi Fund for Development? Saudi Arabia itself, because uh, Saudi Arabia, though till recently was not happy with Turkey's behavior, in fact, had uh, uh, there were almost no good re diplomatic relations between Turkey and uh, between Turkey and uh, Saudi Arabia. Still, the Saudi Arabian government has gone ahead with depositing $5 billion in there in the Turkish central bank now turkey is suffering through an economic is is seriously for suffering an economic crisis inflation is about 57 percent official rate is 57 percent but official rate is usually different from from the market rate the market rate today could be about 120 percent i'm not exaggerating i read extensively on the countries like turkey so you know they have this high inflation 110 120 percent since but it's down it's down from 180 it's now one down to one one zero 
Second thing you need to understand is that the Turkish economy has seen ma major downfall, major fall in output also. And um, they, you know, they, they, they are deeply worried because inflation, high degree for employment and now this earthquake, they are all eating up the lives of the Turkish people. Okay, so they don't have enough money to pay for their imports. Their total foreign exchange is about 20 billion, 20.2 billion as of today. 20.2 billion dollars. So things are pretty tough in Turkey or Turkey as they call it. So um, this money will help Turkey buy foreign stuff, you know, imports and all that stuff. Turkey's capital Ankara, A-N-K-A-R-A, Ankara. And the president is Recep, R-E-C-E-P, R-E-C-E-P, Recep. Erdogan, E-R-D-O-G-A-N, Erdogan, Recep Erdogan. The 140th International Olympic Committee session will be held in Mumbai this year. Mumbai this year. Who is the president of the International Olympic Committee? You could write this. President is... What is this guy's name? German musician. Thomas Bach. Thomas Bach. B-A-C-H. Bach. Thomas Bach. Thomas Bach. And uh, Thomas Bach um, is also... Um, he is from Germany. He is from Germany. Thomas Bach is from Germany. Okay, we mentioned the name of the president of the International Olympic Committee. What about the International? Uh, sorry, what about Indian Olympic Association? You could write this. President of Indian Olympic Association. Indian Olympic Association. Dash PT Usha. PT Usha. PT Usha. Hmm. The 2024 Summer Olympic Games will be held in Paris. Next year, there will be Olympic Games in Paris. In Paris. 2028 Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, United States. Who are the following persons bad at 2022 BBC Indian Sports Woman of the Year Award for the second time in a row? That's the great Mirabai, you know, Chanu. Amazing sports person. Yeah. So, Mirabai Chanu is from Manipur. She's from Manipur. She won a gold medal at the Commonwealth uh, weightlifting, you know, event. And uh, she won two silvers. One at the, at the Tokyo, you know, Tokyo, what we call um, uh, Summer Olympic Games. Tokyo Summer Olympic Games. And then, the, she won another silver. This time at the World Weightlifting Championship. World Weightlifting Championship. She is a true champion, my friends. Hmm? So, you have uh, choices here. The choices are Pritam Sivach and Bhavina Patel, who are very important to us in, this, in, the, in the context of this question. Bhavina Patel, he is a BBC Indian Para Sportswoman of the Year. You write the same thing. Indian BBC, sorry, BBC Indian Para, P A R A, Para Sportswoman of the Year. Sportswoman of the Year. Indian Para Sportswoman of the Year. She is a table tennis player. A table tennis player. Bhavina Patel. She also won, like Mirabai Chanu, she also won the, uh, the gold at Commonwealth Games and a silver at Tokyo Summer Olympic Games. Okay. Uh, coming to Pritam Sivach, she's retired. She's, I think, yeah, she's, she's, she was um, captain of the Indian hockey women's, women's hockey team. Okay, you could write this. Pritam Sivach, dash. BBC Lifetime Achievement Award. BBC Indian Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay. Indians Lifetime Achievement is also we we took all. We took the sportswoman, uh, then para sportswoman, then um, you know Priti Sivach's name we added to the Lifetime Achievement Award also. Uh, Mirabai Chanu defeated PV Sindhu, Sakshi Malik and Nikhat Zarin. 
okay nikhil zarin as you know is a boxer she is from my hometown yeah in which of the following states was the world's first 200 meter long bamboo crash barrier named bahubali installed it is installed in maharashtra where in the vidarbha region there is a particular you know highway called the you could if you want to write you could write vani w a v n i w a n i you could write the v a n i also no harm vani dash varora w a r o r a varora vani varora vani varora highway in vidarbha region in vidarbha region in vidarbha region in maharashtra in maharashtra in maharashtra hmm i want you to know right something more see this is this bamboo was crash tested fire tested because it's wood na fire tested so where was it fire tested you could, if you want to write you could write fire tested at so i'm going to give the name of institute which will help you know something more for the exam fire tested at central building research institute roorkee central building research institute roorkee central building research institute roorkee okay there is an iit roorkee here yeah then next crash tested at crash tested at national automotive national automotive test tracks national automotive test tracks at pitampur or pithampur p i t h a m p u r pitampur near indore it's more or less indore actually pitampur indore indore so this is where it was tested both for fire as well as crash you know it's a crash barrier actually it's better than of course metal and importantly bamboo is in great supply in the northeast of our country so this will also provide employment to the people who are engaged in this trade yeah in the growing bamboo also okay nitin gadkari is a minister of roadways or surface minister of roadways and highways yeah nitin gadkari which country recently claimed to have discovered the world's second largest lithium deposit amounting to 9.2 million metric tons ah oh. we before this um, country iran had announced to the world that they had discovered lithium you know that you know india also had um, something like this india talked about about 5 million metric tons 5.7 take 5 million metric tons and this is almost double that number hmm so iran had announced this particular thing iran's capital is tehran t e h r a n tehran iran is tehran next the president is ibrahim raisi ibrahim e b r a h i m ibrahim raisi r a i s i raisi ibrahim raisi then israel israel capital is jerusalem jerusalem j e r u s a l e m jerusalem mm, the prime minister is benjamin netanyahu benjamin netanyahu n e t a n y a h u netanyahu next iraq iraq uh, capital is baghdad b a g h d a d baghdad and the prime minister is mohammad 
शिया एस एच आई ए मोहम्मद शिया अल सुदानी ए एल अल हाइफन सुदानी एस यू डी ए एन आई मोहम्मद शिया अल सुदानी नेक्स्ट ब्राजील द कैपिटल इज ब्रासिलिया बी आर ए एस आई एल आई ए ब्रासिलिया एंड द प्रेसिडेंट इज लूला डा सिल्वा लूला एल यू एल ए लूला डा डी ए डा सिल्वा एस आई एल वी ए सिल्वा हिज फुल नेम इज लूवी इनाशो लूला डा सिल्वा बट ही इज निक नेम लूला इज निक नेम लूला सो चिले वट इज इट चिले लास्ट वन सी एच आई एल ई चिले चिले इज कैपिटल इज सांतियागो एस ए एन पी आई ए जी ओ सांतियागो Santiago and the president is Gabriel G A B R I E L Gabriel I repeat G A B R I E L Gabriel Gabriel Boric B O R I C Gabriel Boric Gabriel Boric have an assignment I will give you one assignment write the names the top 3 nations with the largest oil reserves gas reserves oil reserves and gas reserves so when you say oil reserves the largest will be in venezuela when you say the gas reserves i think russia has the largest gas reserves you find out more about this yeah the top 3 or if you want to write top 5 and find where india stands in that top 5 with highest reserves of gas natural gas and highest reserves of um, you know oil look it up you will find iran in at least you know in in fact both the lists okay it's an energy superpower identify the person who recently took oath as meghalaya chief minister for the second term sangma conrad sangma you look at choice 4 zoram tanga zoram tanga is a chief minister of um, mizoram the chief minister of Mizoram, Chief Minister of Mizoram, and um, choice one, Arunachal Pradesh CM, Pema Khandu, Arunachal Pradesh CM. Choice five, Nagaland, Rio, Nifu Rio, Nagaland. Union Minister Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh recently participated in the 19th Bimstek Ministerial Meeting, which country is chair of the sixth Bimstek, Thailand. Let's write Bimstek's full name. Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal. Initiative. I N I T I A T I V. Initiative. So B stands for Bay of Bengal. I for initiative. for multi sectoral multi sectoral multi sectoral technical multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation and economic cooperation hmm? Head office, Dhaka, D H A K, Dhaka. Next, Secretary General, Tenjin Lakhval, Tenjin, T E N Z I N, T E N Z I N, Tenjin, Lakhval, L E K P H E L L, Lakhval, Tenjin Lakhval. In brackets, Bhutan. B H U T A N Bhutan. Last point: seven members. So Bimstek has seven members. Seven members. You really see this five here. Bhutan's secretary, the company, the organization secretary general is Bhutanese. You could write that also. And Bangladesh. 
and Bangladesh. So, Sri Lanka, I can take the arc, okay? Sri Lanka, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, seven countries. Hmm? All those on the coast of, you know, Bay of Bengal plus two countries, Bhutan and Nepal, which don't have access to the coasts, yeah, on to the Bay of Bengal. You know why it's called Bay of Bengal? Bay is a water body that is surrounded by land on three sides. You should look at peninsula. A peninsula is a water body surrounded by land on three sides. Yeah, I'm so sorry. A peninsula, a peninsula is a land body surrounded by water on three sides. Land body surrounded by water on three sides. Okay, so if you look at bay, it's a water body surrounded by land on three sides. Bay is a water body surrounded by land on three sides. Okay. Ram Chandra Pawdal was recently elected as a prime minister, elected the new president of Nepal. She, he succeeded Bidya Devi. Bidya Devi. Bidya Devi is the outgoing president. Incoming is Ram Chandra Pawdal. So I think Sri Lanka we have been discussing for a long time. Bhutan has a prime minister and a king. The prime minister's name is Lote Shering. L O T A Y. Lote. L O T A Y. Lote. Sharing T S H E R I N G Lotte Sharing. Uh, that's the Prime Minister of Bhutan. Maldives President is Mohammed. Sorry, I'm sorry. Ibrahim Mohammed Sole. Ibrahim Mohammed Sole. S O L E H. Last one Fiji. Fiji as a Prime Minister, we discussed Fiji sometime last week. Fiji's Prime Minister is Sitiveni Rabuka, S-I-T-I-V-E-N-I. Sitiveni Rabuka, R-A-B-U-K-A, Rabuka. Sitiveni Rabuka. Okay. To which Arab nation was Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani recently appointed Prime Minister? Qatar. See, remember, Al Thani is the ruling house of Qatar. Ruling house. That's a family that runs Qatar. It's a royal house. Okay. So, Qatar, that's a Prime Minister. But who is the king of Qatar? Tamim Al Thani. Tamim, T A M I M. Tamim Al Thani. Coming to Kuwait. Nawaf, I will give you the entire name. Nawaf, Al Zabar, Al Ahmad, Al Sabha. You know, Al Sabha. Don't write all that. Right. Kuwait dash king is King Nawaf. N A W A F. Nawaf. King Nawaf. Al Sabha. A L hyphen S A B A H. Al Sabha. Saudi Arabia. Salman. Sam Salman Ibn Saud. I'm giving the surnames actually. Okay, Salman Ibn Saud. Next, United Arab Emirates. Right, um, Muhammad bin Zayed. Muhammad bin Zayed. Muhammad bin bin B I N bin means son of Muhammad bin Zayed. Al Nahyan, Al Nahyan, A L N A H Y A N. Hmm. Then Jordan, King Abdullah the Second, Abdullah, King Abdullah, Hashimaiti, H A S H E. I repeat, H A. S H E M I T E Hashimaiti Hashimaiti Okay, yeah. That's all from me. It's been a long class, I guess. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious.